California, east of the Sierra Nevada mountain range, south of Mammoth Lakes, is a reservoir along the Owens River called Crowley Lake. After the dam was completed and the reservoir filled, the eroding force of the water revealed a rare geological formation known as the Crowley Lake Stone Columns. How did these natural columns form? First, this part of the Owens River is at the east end of the Long Valley Caldera. A caldera is a volcanic feature where an eruption occurs and so much material is expelled that the land collapses, forming a caldera. Other examples of calderas around the U.S. are Yellowstone, Crater Lake, Mauna Loa, and Kilauea. The Long Valley volcano erupted about 780,000 years ago, laying down a thick layer of ash and tuff to the east in what eventually became the caldera, 20 by 10 miles, 32 by 16 kilometers. Snow and freezing rain fell on the still hot volcanic tuff and formed convection tubes as the sinking water heated up. The rising steam blocked the downward movement of the heated water except for the cooler channels that became the columns. The chemical reaction in these columns cemented the bits of volcanic tuff together forming what geologists call mordanite. The geologist credited with figuring out the process is Noah Randolph Flagg and his team. The dam in the Owens River Gorge that formed Crowley Lake gave the water access to the area where the columns formed and started eroding away the softer material between the columns. I was able to find the location of the Crowley Lake columns on the eastern shore of Crowley Lake using Google Earth. But now, what if you want to see them in person? Here's what you do. Crowley Lake is located in Mono County, southeast of Mammoth Lakes and northwest of Bishop. To get there, you can turn off of Highway 395 onto the Owens Gorge Road and follow it down to the river level and cross over the dam that formed Crowley Lake. After climbing up for the dam, the road to the columns will be on your left at a sharp angle that will make it easy to miss. You'll have to take a sharp left to get on that road. Then you'll curve downhill to a low point. Along the way, you have some parking areas to choose from if you plan to walk the two miles to the columns. Otherwise, you'll have to face the wall in a four-wheel drive vehicle with high ground clearance to climb up a steep hill with a surface full of potholes. If you get past that hill, the rest of the drive is level and easy. Eventually, you'll turn off left on of this dirt road to reach a hilltop that looks down on the columns. Then you'll hike down a sandy slope to get to the shoreline. We're on the eastern shore of Crowley Lake and we're already parked and looking down and seeing the columns, the famous columns. So, we're heading down. So these are the Crowley Lake columns. The dark lines on the columns indicate how high the water level was the previous spring. Some of these go back quite a bit. It looks like you're in a room being held up by all these columns. Or the roof being held up. These are natural features. There are columns on the other side of this beach that we're on. We've got the bigger, more noticeable columns behind us, but you can see these columns are emerging as well along the shoreline. Among the columns, I'm seeing a uh, swallow nest. And a swallow just flew past us. I'm keeping him from that one. So there's another an active swallow nest. And cliff swallows. I can see the baby's face sticking out. Here's a column that seems to have had the middle taken out of it. You can see it's up in the roof. 
There's the bottom of a column. And as you come down, there's a column without a middle. A lot of this rocky beach here is looks like rocks that were formed at the columns and then came apart. Very round. Just like the columns are very round. All these little segments. Looks like they've come apart and now they're on the shoreline, making up the shoreline. That's a dark line here may be where the water level normally is. So during the spring, these columns are probably partly submerged. So I ran to the bend from the columns we were looking at first by the beach, and I said, oh, you can see a lot more columns continuing on shoreline, but I think we're probably at the best examples. If I turn this way, I think those are the better examples. And then there's the beach, and then it continues over there. So, apparently you make columns. Fascinating. I guess these might be regarded as the arches, natural arches. A bit of uh, the soil, or whatever, the dirt still connecting them at the top, and then they form archways kind of between, between the columns. So, that could be a new way for a natural arch to be considered formation, a natural arch formation. It's different from any other way. This end of the, uh, the other you can see some, yeah, that are leaning and that have had pieces fall off. Right there, and then here's one that's already collapsed and is lying on its side. And you can see this beach is made up of sand and rock, and the rock looks like it's entirely collapsed columns. All the rocky shores, the rocks from the column pieces that have come apart. So here's one that's Collapsed, fallen over, and the pieces are separated. So, this whole beach is made of that rock. The geologist who figured out how these formed it figures that there's about 5,000 columns in a two to three square mile area. Now, here are some photographs I took while we were visiting the Crowley Lake Columns. Thanks for watching, now be sure to like and subscribe.